a saddle. Sure. As we move to the 156 pound open competition, should be a dandy fight. Two men with pro aspirations. That gentleman there in the blue corner is Yuri Foreman. Says he fell in love with boxing as a 10 year old in Russia when he saw Mike Tyson fight. Since that uh, time, Yuri has known boxing success in many places, but he wants to win a Golden Gloves championship. I'm going to make it. I'm going, I'm going to win Golden Gloves. I'm going to fight with the. My friend Leon Heinz, I think I'm going to beat him. That's it. After that, I think I might go into Golden Glove National. And I think I'm going to win Golden Glove National. And after that, I'm going to represent Israel in World Championship. And after that, turn pro. I'm already like in the United States of uh, two years. And everybody talking about the Golden Gloves. So for me, it's, it's exciting, exciting. Like, it's, it's almost like a world championship. In like, if you win Golden Gloves, everybody knows you're getting famous in the United States. This is very exciting for me. Well, Yuri Foreman in the blue corner. But in the gold corner, a very confident Leon Hines. He says he's the best boxer. We'll hear more about both of these men from our ring announcer, Kevin Van Meter. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's next bout is the men's 156 pound open class. The referee is Danny Gant. In the gold corner, Leon Hines from the bed -Stuy Boxing Club. Hines is the 1999 147 pound novice champ and is planning to start a pro career shortly. His record, one by one knockout. In the blue corner, Yuri Foreman from Gleason's Gym. A Brooklyn resident, Foreman made it to the finals last year in the 147 pound open. His record, one decision, one knockout. Danny Gant, the referee, the third man in the ring, Yuri Foreman. Russian native, citizen of Israel, been in the United States for two years. And Leon Hines in the gold corner out of Bed-Stuy Boxing Club. 19 years old, stands six feet one, and Kathy Burke, he says, he wants to be interviewed. He does, not camera shy. Very brash, very cocky of him. But he was the 147 pound novice champ in 1999 at Golden Gloves. Fighters, lightning quick build, Nancy. But so, so far, Hines is the stylist. And Palmer, again, with that physical, moving left hand high, Russian style. Nancy. Foreman trained by Mike Kozlowski. Comfortable to leave that left hand down at his hip. He's got very fast hands. Likes to double up on that left jab as we saw a little earlier. the closing seconds in round one. MSGstore.com, the online location for cool merchandise from the 2000 Subway Series, the Knicks, Rangers, and the hard-to-find Yankees Monopoly, all at MSGstore.com. And I finally hit a green. I might make a par. And the ball took the second bounce and bounced in the hole. And they went wild, the three guys that I'm playing with. Nice little Continue on help partners. Nice little Continue on help partners. Competition, second of four rounds. Oh, 
Gentlemen's willing to take more risks than Hines. Just throwing punches, letting it all hang out, leaving himself a little bit open, but Hines is not setting and trying to punch back right away. And Danny Gant with a warning to Yuri Foreman for pushing. Again, Foreman looks crude and awkward, but he's landing punches. And Hines is uh, fighting a very defensive fight. It's like he's just trying to stay away from his big blows. I would think also it's imperative for Hines to do something to give Foreman uh, a hint that, you know what, you come in here, you get some damage done to you, but he, he hasn't stung yet. I don't know if he can, Gil. But again, he has to show the judges something, too. Get right to the body by you and Foreman to start that sequence. Coming in, he's leaving himself wide open. When, but again, Hines is too much, too defensive, not looking to score points or punishing punches. Got a right hand by Foreman. Foreman landing all kinds of shots, light and heavy. As we come up on the good left hand, as we come up on the closing seconds of round two, we stay right here and listen to the corners of both these boxers. to bring it up. The other guy's dad was already in his face. They see all welterweight really fast hands, but he used to keep his hands down low by his hip. Do you think he learned it from him? <laughs> That's a possibility. How many guys yelled that at you? Your hands are too low. Keep them up. I think the whole the whole crowd, the audience, everybody. But I'm not. I mean, you know, I learned from my experience, and now you know, I'm trying to teach them the same thing. You looked a lot cooler in the ring than you do out here. How do you feel for this kid now? Oh, it's much easier inside, you know, but um. I'm a, little more, I'm a little more nervous outside the ring than I am inside. You know, he's got the ability, you know, to, to become a good fighter. He's just got to listen more. And I guess the nervousness right now is really getting to him. He's got to learn how to be you know, a little more relaxed. Okay, well, you've got to get back to work in a couple of seconds. Help him out. Thanks for stopping by. Kathy Burke with Mike Reeland, and there is a mouthpiece on the canvas. The mouthpiece belonging to Leon Hines. That was from a good right hand, too. Mark Breland telling me it's a lot easier in the ring than it is outside the ring. Right hands like that, oh, now easy can be, Gil Clancy. 
Well, I understand exactly what he's talking about. And another good left in that exchange by Yuri Foreman. As we wrap up, round number three, we'll be back for the exciting finish on MSP. The never-ending line. 